Happy Friday night, people. You know what this means? It's time for reviews. Normally, I would do the one comic that I didn't like that week and the three best. Tonight, feeling kind of lazy. So I'm going to just do one video for all the comics. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six comics. Have seven of them, but one of them is a double issue. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna review the, <laughs> the same issue twice. All right, so I'm gonna go from worst to best. Uh, let's see. The one I'd like least this week would be, and you know, this it, it isn't bad. Again, you know, like I have to keep quantifying just because it's the one that I liked the least that week. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. The one I liked least this week would be Gideon Falls number 22 by Jeff Lemire. Uh, it, this is a really weird book. Uh, they've got so much going on and it kind of jumps back and forth. It's for me, it's kind of hard to, okay, let's just keep that on so it looks a little better. It's hard for me to keep track of what's going on because they're jumping from place to place and things are happening and you're like, wait, what? Hold on. Uh, uh, you know, I've got the basic gist of what's going on, but, you know, it's, it's kind of hard for me to follow. Maybe I'm just stupid. I don't know. Uh, but, uh, I don't know. It's been 22 issues so far, and I'm just, I'm just sitting there going, okay. Uh, right? Still don't know what's going on. It's odd. I'm going to give this a 2.5 out of 5. Next up for this week, Vampironica, New Blood, number four. This is the sequel series to <laughs> Vampironica, uh, where now you have Jughead the Hunger, right? And you'd think that Jughead the Hunger and Vampironica are in the same universe. They're not which is kind of weird, but in this one you have Veronica finding out that the Lodge family, you know, her and her family are vampires. Uh, and this one is obviously a continuation of the regular series. That's why it's New Blood. First one was like four issues. This one is four issues and this one ends it. Uh, th this series has a group of vampires showing up to try and come after her, which she calls the Lost Boys Light, or somebody did. Uh, and you find out that Veronica, like her great-great-great-grandfather, is an apex vampire who feeds only on vampires. Uh... And she can control other vampires. Uh, you know, I've never really been a big fan of, oh, dang it, of Archie's stuff just because, you know, it's Archie. <laughs> but if you do Archie in horror, I'm a fan of the horror stuff. And uh, I've been actually kind of enjoying these. Uh, this series, because, you know, I am a big fan of Vampires and Werewolves, if you've been watching my series. Uh, so let me have a little bit of a drink here. Uh, you know, Friday Night Drunk Reviews. 
Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not, you know, Cullen Bunn type stuff. It's not that, you know, awesome. It's not Tinny the Fourth type of stuff, but it's pretty good. Uh, if you like Archie, if you like horror, and you just like, uh, lighthearted horror, pick it up. I'm going to give this a 3.25 out of five. Now, next, the crow. All right, is it L is L E T H E leave or levy? I'm not sure which. I'm saying leath. Going on, you know, grammatical rules, but I could be wrong. By Tim Seeley. Tim Seeley does one of my favorite books, which is Red Fang, or Dark Fang, uh, and he's done a couple of other crow stories. Now, this book is interesting because you have the central character here. His name is Null. He was found running around, you know, just out on the streets, buck-ass naked, no memories, by a woman who ran a freak show. And she brought him into the freak show. He is, he feels no pain. So, you know, they're <laughs> bringing him into the freak show and uh, incorporating him into the act. And at the end of the last book, the woman who brought him in was murdered and he is one of the suspects as to who killed her. Uh, he is obviously a a crow or, you know, not a crow, but, you know, as in the same aspect that Brandon Lee and the crow is one. You know, uh, he, need, he is brought back to life to avenge his murder and kill the murderers, but he had just forgotten what he was supposed to be doing. And in this one, he is somehow between the skeleton uh, collector on the train from the from the series from the books uh, and the crow. He remembers what he's supposed to do while trying to escape imprisonment from the police. Very well done. I'm going to give this a 3.5 out of 5. Now, next book. Daphne Byrne, number 5. This is a DC Black label, and it is also... Uh, Joe Hill, uh, Hill House Comics uh, imprint. Uh, one of the few that I'm actually still reading. Uh, it's very hard to describe. Basically, it's Victorian England, maybe not Victorian England, pretty much set at the same time as Dracula. It deals with a woman by the name of Daphne Byrne, or a, a young woman by the name of Daphne Byrne, who is the daughter of a widow who had once, from, from a prominent family who's now going broke. Uh, the mother is a big fan of the occult. She goes to, to readers and all that. And the daughter is like, okay, uh, this is bullshit. But the daughter is being haunted by a ghost. Or a, some sort of a spirit, <coughs> excuse me, who is trying to prove to her how much she, he loves her. And so there's this war of wills going on between the mother, the spirit who is 
haunting Daphne and the reader who is obviously full of shit who is trying to take over or get things from the mother. Uh, it's a really interesting book. Uh, that's the best way I can describe it. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, it, it, it's fun. I'm going to give this a 3.5 out of 5. Now, or 3.75 out of 5. Let's go 3.75 out of 5. Now, next. Dark Knight's Death Metal, number one. This is the main cover. I have the, one of the other covers sitting in my room. Haven't cracked that one open. This is the main cover. So this is the, this is the reading one, and I have a non-red one in there. Another one in my box, Bosco's, which is just up the street. But that's 20 bucks, so I'm waiting. Uh, now, I've read the other books of this. I didn't read Scott Snyder's Justice League. Well, I, I started to, but then I didn't. I stopped. And so I've been told that you needed to read a lot of Scott Snyder's Justice League between you know, the Dark Knight, I mean, between the uh, other stuff and this to find out what's going on uh, with things. And even then, there's a big jump between the end of the falling of the the wall and this. One of the things I don't like about what Scott Snyder's doing with the Batman Who Laughs is, you know, I think they're trying to do uh, something artistic. And whenever the Batman Who Laughs talks, it's in a black, the box, the, you know, word box is black with red lettering. I've always found that really hard to read. Maybe it's because I'm old and my, my eyes might be going. But I've talked to Joe from Joe's Geek Show who is young and he has a hard time reading it too. So maybe it's not just me. Um, I think they've taken this series way too long. It's been, what, three years since they introduced this stuff and it's just... It, it's going on way too long. And so it's kind of a, a cash grab. I don't know. Um, and this seems to be kind of a... I don't, I don't know whether it's taking place in main continuity or it's an Elseworld series. Because this is, you know, seems to be jumping away into the future and so I mean, I mean look about look at Wonder Woman's outfit right here that's not main Wonder Woman uh, you know you have you know caveman Superman here uh, I'm lost I really am uh, I sort of put this one a little earlier in the ratings um uh, Yeah, I'm really kind of lost with this. I mean, I found it somewhat interesting. And I'm glad that a certain person who is... Uh, a certain person is no longer with us in this book. But I am intrigued with what happened at the very end of the book. And, you know, despite how semi-odd and semi-boring the book was, the cliffhanger at the end brought it up uh, made it so I want to get the second and while the other ones are going to have a, some of the other ones in this review have the same rating that's kind of high for those because they don't have that expectation this one has a huge expectation 
which would make it higher. I'm only going to give it a 3.75 out of 5. If that makes any sense. Now, the last book of the week. Batman and the Outsider is number 13. Main cover, because they did not have an alternative cover there. Or at least they didn't put it in my box. And I had Joe from Joe's Geek Show there at the moment they opened, and he says they didn't have a variant cover, so, oh well. Now, I have really enjoyed this series. Uh, we're still dealing with uh, the Outsiders dealing with Race Al Ghul. Uh, the original number one, you have a family friend of the Wayne family and his daughter driving down the street. The older guy, the father gets killed. The daughter survives. Turns out she's got some sort of superpower. Blah, blah, blah. Race Hagul kidnaps her. Now we've got her back and Batman and Bruce Wayne and the Outsiders are training her. But you also have Orphan dealing with her mother, Shiva, who was working with Ra's al Ghul. And Ra's al Ghul has a new component that he had found, which is some alien technology. Um, it's not really convoluted, but it's just, it would take some time to explain if you don't know what's going on. Uh, there's a really good confrontation between Katana and Lady Shiva over whether or not uh, Orphan and Duke, who are having doubts about, you know, staying in the Outsiders, get to decide whether or not to stay with the Outsiders or not. Uh, a fight between Lady Shiva and Katana. And you have Batman and Black Lightning talking to John Jones, who gives a history of the component that Ra's al Ghul has gotten because it is alien technology. I'm really liking this series. It's more of the... There is action, but there's also Batman doing the investigative stuff and his theories. And... Uh, I'm telling you, if you're a Batman fan and if you're you know a team fan, uh, get Batman and the Outsiders. I'm gonna give this a 4.25 out of five, and uh, enjoy. So, what did you think of what I got? What do you think of what I'm saying? Did you like it? Did you not? And uh, either way, enjoy your comics. Talk to you later.